up with you man oh my god it's gonna be awesome how's everything going i am staying busy trying to get back into the like old new routine with like covid and everything and just yeah yeah just trying to navigate it all because honestly last year to me didn't even exist yeah i don't know if it existed to you at all (laughs) very barely (laughs) yeah yeah this year is feeling weird too. I don't know. This year feels even more hopeless than last year for some Honestly, reason. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I think it was the weekend announced he was doing a tour for yes. next year already. And I was like, are we going to be back at that like normal, normal state yeah. at that point? And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. Oh, it's um, madness. <laughs> okay. I mean, we can just dive right into it and cool. kind of catch up at the same time. Awesome. Um, Let's do it. Cool. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of The Hangout. It's Sid. And if you love music as much as I do, well, this is the perfect podcast for you. Um, On today's episode, actually, we have a veteran of The Hangout. He was on the second episode of The Hangout back in 2019. And since then, he has been around the world, made his Netflix debut, started a family, and just, of course, has been playing music throughout the whole entire time. Let's welcome the talented drummer, Mike Sleeth, to the show. Hello, thank you so much. (laughs) How are you? I'm all right. (laughs) I'm all right. I mean, yeah, you know, this whole COVID thing has been interesting as we were just talking about, but yeah, I'm good. I'm just working on music and stuff. That's yeah. amazing. You, I guess a lot has happened since the last time we chatted, which was like, while you guys were in the middle of tour, you yeah. guys were in Vancouver. Right, yeah. Um, I guess kind of catch us up, but like you've started, you've moved, you've done so much, you are now engaged as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was, uh, I guess, like having this pause in music sort of like allowed, you know, like the rest of life to kind of you know, maybe I like started filling in the blanks of like the rest of my life that I wasn't kind of taken care of and that I wasn't touring. I don't think all of this would have happened if we were on the road, but yeah. yeah. So that was in 2019, I guess. See, I keep on thinking the tour was last year, but it wasn't, it was two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So what did we do? So yeah, we, uh, that was in the summer, right? We were in Vancouver in the summer. Yeah. And then we went to, then we spent all of the fall in Asia and Australia. And then we finished off in South America, like a couple days before Christmas. Wow. Um, yeah, I think I got home Christmas Eve. <laughs> it was like, it was crazy. That's crazy. Um, yeah. And then other than that, I guess like 2020 started off like very promising. Totally. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to go back to Asia to do like a clinic tour out there. And then I was going to do a clinic tour in Canada ending. Um, this was really cool. This was, I was really excited for this. <laughs> I'm just, uh, we're going to start this podcast off by all the things that I didn't get to do last year. No! <laughs> um, but yeah, but we had a, yeah. So I was going to do a clinic tour through China and then, um, and then I had a clinic tour starting in, I think it was in Manitoba and it was about like 10 days or something like that. And it ended in, uh, Victoria oh, that's uh, so cool. with like a stop in Vancouver and all this stuff so I would have been out there and then that all got canceled <laughs> and then we were supposed to do stuff all summer but whatever that didn't happen so last year it was kind of weird like we didn't start doing stuff until um or I didn't start doing stuff with Sean until uh I guess September wow and yeah so just working through this whole COVID thing has been very interesting because it's like you know, you get tested, like, I think I've, I've probably been tested 60 or 70 times this, you know, like you, you get tested almost every day. Oh my God. Um, sometimes multiple times. So like for, we did two trips to LA that were both about like a month, month and change long. Um, and we did, yeah, all the stuff for Sean's like new album that was coming out that did come up. Um, yeah, so it was weird. We had to go there and we were like in a big bubble kind of thing. Yeah, so how was like, that quarantine situation? <laughs> it was wild. So like, yeah, you just go. We, we went to these like, the, like it's we normally stay in hotels in, in LA, but like they would just get us like a kind of like big house. 
and it's we're all just like living in this house and like waking up every morning cooking food and like you know like so it, I got to know the band a lot more <laughs> you know who does who likes what the ba the bass player loves to have peppermint tea in the evenings <laughs> so I I've adopted this peppermint tea thing which is lovely this isn't actually peppermint tea. <laughs> because um, you guys yeah. have literally been like non-stop for like I don't know how many years like four or five years now and then yeah. suddenly it just like cut yeah yeah so well it was it's also wild because 2019 was like the craziest year you know like we were on the road for um I think like 260 days of two, 2019 wow. so like I was only home like like we would go up for like you know, three months or something like that. And then come home for two weeks, go back out for like a couple months. And like, so it's also really weird coming off that to like, whoa. <laughs> like, absolutely nothing anymore. Yeah, absolutely nothing. So yeah, so that's been interesting. But I mean, like, you know, like with with putting out that, that album, um, you know, we did do like some promo and stuff or even like we did like the only award show that we were actually in, uh uh like in in the arena for was we did the american music awards and it's in it's in the 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 uh, theater that like the american music awards normally normally is but they would only allow one act in at a time you you walk in like staggered we had to wear masks the entire time like on stage which i guess is kind of normal but that was yeah. my like normally with all the other stuff we've done with sean it's kind of been like all like like you can sort of, you know, like I sit behind my drums and sound check and do everything with like a mask on. Totally. And then we leave and go to the dressing room and like, you know, lighting guys come and do like all their stuff. And then, uh, uh, and then we kind of come back and take off the masks and it's like, just the band is, is there and there's nobody else really around. But yeah. then the American Music Awards, it's like, there's, you know, it's our crew are there and we couldn't even have our full crew. <laughs> it was like, like we could only bring half of the crew into the room. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was interesting. It's definitely a weird experience. And then we like, you know, you play and there's nobody in the crowd. So yeah, like, there's, there's no, no crowd. cheering, there's oh. nothing. <laughs> oh, so it was weird. It was definitely a weird experience. Because <laughs> yeah, I was watching like your old, like your drum cam videos and everything and just looking at like all the tour memories. And I was like, just like that fan interaction with the audience and then hearing the crowd roar is just like something that we miss so much. No, I know. And I think, I think like artists like Sean and everything, like they really like feed off that kind of energy too. Like, totally. you know, we do, we would do, do like performances, like all that. I don't know if you saw all of his like residency kind of stuff, hmm. but, but we did all that stuff just in, um, in this theater called the palace called, I think a uh, palace theater or something. It's in, it's in okay. Los Angeles as well. And we did it there and we would like do a take. And then it's just like crickets, like, <laughs> like nobody, nobody applauding, just kind of, so then you finish and you're kind of like, uh, okay. Uh, next one? <laughs> you know, like normally like the crowd make the, you know, make the transition sort of smoother because they're yeah, like yeah. cheering, but like now it's kind of like, okay, so I guess we'll do a different song. <laughs> I, I just wonder how everyone's going to go back to normal because everyone's going to like get into an arena someday and then it's going to be like, I'm too close to this person or yeah. I probably shouldn't be here or like, I don't know how it's going to like readapt or like transition to that. So it's- Yeah. Yeah, I think it's so weird. Like, what are they going to do? Like have like half the, you know, half the people there or something like that, like- and you guys, I think yesterday you posted as well, it was the two year anniversary for the Grammy Awards. Yeah. Which is literally like, it feels like again, like it was last year. Like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really feels like 2020 didn't happen. I like that it, you said that. Like that, <laughs> it, it really like didn't happen. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to another artist and they were like, it's like we all subtracted one year from our lives. Yeah. We just literally are transitioning from 2019 to 2021. Like it doesn't yeah. even feel like 2021 at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's still like, yeah, it still feels equally as weird. <laughs> like maybe there's an end in sight, but like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. lucky timing because you guys were able to play the sold out show um, in Toronto at Rogers Center, which, yeah. oh my goodness, like congratulations. Can you make a cameo on that? <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. This is not about me. This is about you and your musical talent. <laughs> I, I watched that about a month before it came out or something like that. We watched it like we watched it super like it wasn't color corrected and like it had like property of 
Netflix and yeah. all this stuff on it. So it was like, but we still watched it together. And as soon as I saw you, I'm like, oh, no, I'm like, I got a message her. I got a message her. I'm like, don't message her. I'm not even, wasn't even supposed to watch that. <laughs> that's so funny yeah because you actually messaged me on my birthday and I was like this is the like it was the craziest birthday week I could have like ever imagined because I was like okay like we're in isolation I can't hang out with any of my friends all my plans are canceled and then everything just started going crazy and I was like everyone's just like Sid did you see this and I was like oh I don't know it because it was like a year after too and everyone, yeah. it, it, it was kind of like just a nice memory at this point but then the Netflix thing and the documentary all coming back just like brought back such a good sensation that like concerts were actually a thing and like yeah interact and meet with people yeah oh man I I loved watching it back just for that reason just like oh my gosh like how was it yeah because it's just (laughs) like for you to be like from Toronto as well and just playing like such a monumental like location and venue how is it for you guys to like step in there and just experience all that well the performance when it was happening, I was freaking out, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, well, we went in, I think we rehearsed for two days before that. Cause mm-hmm. like, um, that was pretty much the only stadium on that tour. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, other than there was a couple in Brazil, but that was like the only like stadium stadium. So, um, yeah. So they brought in like so much more, like, uh, so many more like speakers and PA systems and stuff. And like, they had a lot more lights and they had all this stuff. So we rehearsed like two days before the gig. I think we rehearsed twice. So, um, you know, after the first time I was, I was kind of comfortable, like, you know, like I had like sort of, I, I like to like visualize a lot. So like I had sat behind the drums and we like ran, ran the set like a couple times and I got to like look out and I'm going to be like, okay, in two days, this is going to be filled with 50,000 people. I'm like, you're cool with that, right? <laughs> you know, and I'm just kind of like playing. So then come to time, I was like, you know, I was a little bit less, I was a little bit less nervous than I would have been if we just like, just jumped in there. Cause I, I knew so many people in the crowd too. Like, yeah. you know, like old teachers of mine were there just randomly old friends of mine. Like, you know, I was getting like messages. Yeah. I got messages from like my second grade teacher <laughs> and she Aww. was like, Oh, you sound great up there. Like, that's yeah. amazing because yeah. I guess like obviously w- did you feel more nervous knowing that there were people who like kind of like like help build you who you are today and just like in the crowd like that yeah yeah like it really it really really felt like like I was playing like a small hometown show yeah. you know and like my parents were there <laughs> you know my aunt and uncle were there like so it really felt like it wasn't just like not that any show you just play like a you know it's just any crowd like I don't mean it like that but this one felt like oh my god like I better be really good tonight <laughs> like like my uncle was there and he's the reason I started playing drums yeah. um yeah so there was definitely that like added you know it was it could have been there could have been like 10 people there and it, if it was just this 10 people I would have been equally as nervous <laughs> but yeah oh just like talking about all of this I just want to get back into like an I arena and just, like, hang out with everyone again oh man it's um, so okay. much fun oh, man. <laughs> I guess like take us back to sort of like the beginning of your drumming journey because I guess a lot of people don't know what goes behind the scenes of like getting into professional drumming or like becoming a professional um, instrumentalist can you tell yeah. us about how you kind of got into that scene? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's really funny. Okay, so I was ju- like literally just having this conversation with a friend of mine who oh, yeah. goes by, he'll, pro- he'll probably check out this podcast. His, he goes by <laughs> um, Musician Dude. Uh, <laughs> okay, I saw, I saw. He's like one of your biggest fans and like- oh, <laughs> I'm one of his biggest fans. But Aww. we were just talking, we're, like, so he's so he's a fair bit younger and he, he lives in New York. And um, he was like, he was like, oh, so it snowed a lot in New York. So uh, he's been shoveling like his neighbor's driveways and all this stuff to make up enough money to buy to buy some stuff. And I used mm-hmm. to do the exact same thing. So oh. to get in, so when I started like playing, I was like, well, you know, I need I need more stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, like it's not enough to just have something like basic. Like I always, I was always like, well, I need like a bunch of different cowbells. Cause you know, like, what if I need them? <laughs> Which I, <laughs> I, I haven't used a cowbell, I don't know, ever. But, um, <laughs> But like, so I used to do the same thing and it was like, I was playing drums and then I'd be like, okay, so if I can like, I'll like deliver papers and then introduce myself to neighbors and be like, you know, if it snows, can you give me $20 and I'll like shovel your driveway? 
yeah so the, i don't know why well we were just talking about that but like yeah yeah so i used to that that's kind of how yeah so by saving up money and kind of doing that stuff i used to buy like magazines and stuff um like different drum magazines and then i would like learn all the stuff that's in them and all that kind of stuff and yeah and just i really i always immersed myself in like other musicians and stuff and to see what they were kind of doing and not to like replicate it but like to kind of find like a you know my path within all these other people's yeah, paths. like draw inspiration from them as well and yeah you know, kind of like infuse yourself in there yeah yeah because I like I don't think you can do exactly what somebody else does <laughs> you know like I I think it's kind of like it's good to know how other people kind of did that but like mm -hmm. I've always found that it's sort of like okay this one thing will come up and then it's like okay so how how do you like how do you handle that situation or something like that but like the way that you handle it might not necessarily work for somebody else and mm. vice versa I don't know where I'm going there <laughs> I feel like personality is a huge thing too like every single drummer or musician every single person could have like a similar sound but if the personality is different and the character traits aren't like obviously the exact same then it's gonna sound different and the experience yeah. is built differently too yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's so important as a musician or just like as a person to just find your own voice. Totally. And I, f I find that's like what, um, you know, that's what people hire for, I guess, in any job, you know? Yeah. Like I would see like Elon Musk. <laughs> Do you know Elon Musk? Of course. <laughs> I check out a lot of stuff on Elon Musk. I'm a big Elon yeah. Musk fan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, his whole thing, he's like, he's like, well, you don't have to have a degree or you don't have to go to school or anything like that. But like, you know, if you're a smart person and I, <laughs> I'll want to like work with you. So I think that's the same with music. Interesting. I could be wrong. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the audition process kind of like getting into it? Because I guess like, tell us about like auditioning for Sean. Like, how did you get from there to where you are now? Um, so with Sean specifically, I... Uh, I guess not Sean specifically, but what, what I always do for auditions is I will um, learn every single song by the artist. This is like wow. sort of, yeah, this is just a thing I always do. So with like, um, cool. <clears throat> with like kind of like younger artists, they don't have too many songs, so it's not too cool. difficult. Sean, <laughs> Sean only had, I think, like his album was a handwritten was out, I think. Right. Maybe it wasn't actually out. Maybe I think it might have just been an EP, but I think there were like five or six songs out um so they asked me to learn something big uh <laughs> i don't remember the other ones uh oh something big stitches and maybe kid in love or something like that oh wow that's um, throwing it back <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i had learned i learned all like all of the songs that he had released um mm. and i also learned all of the covers that he had performed like I like went through his YouTube and like, I, I, I really do. You got to do your homework. Yeah. So, totally. and I really wanted that gig because yeah. I was with Tyler Shaw at the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So I, like at the time I was playing with Tyler Shaw and I think I just got the Francesco gig. Mm. Um, Francesco Yates. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows him. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I was with them and then, and then Dan Cantor, who is, uh, he was, Justin Bieber's musical director at the time, he had called me because I, I I've known him for kind of like years, and then yeah, so he sent me the songs, and or he sent me the list of songs to learn, and then Danny, you know Danny Reiner, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> our mutual yeah. friend Danny, yeah. <laughs> so then Danny got me a copy of, of all of the songs. I guess he he got me like some sort of copy of the the, oh, the actual nice. album, nice. And so I went through learning all of them like in kind of really I always try to do. I was trying to like really keep the integrity of the song, but make it feel exciting and energetic live. Hmm. Um, and and really like think out of the box, but then also show that I can think in the box. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like- Like find that good like, balance. Yeah. So like with something big, um, that song is just like, it's, it's not like a drummer playing it. It's just hmm. a, a whole series of different like drum sounds. So you have that like, there's like the it's that kind of thing and then there's like claps happening and there's this like tambourine thing happening so i i developed this whole like way of of playing that whole like playing the chorus and verse and all this stuff just um 
just like really true to the song with the actual sounds um, and all this stuff. And, and I learned the one that Danny sent me. So like, <laughs> so like I learned this version, I'm like, okay, cool. This is really cool. Like, I can't wait to show them this song because like they're gonna lose their mind and I'm gonna get this kid. Like, you know, like I was really happy with what I came up with. And then we get into the audition and it was just, um, it was me, Dan Cantor and Zubin because Zubin was always gonna be the musical director. Oh, that's so um, cool. But Dan sort of like put together the whole band. Um, and then they put on something big and it's like way faster. <laughs> so like, like the version they started playing and I was like, oh. I, and then, but I didn't want to say, whoa, 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 I, I can't play this. But so I was like, so they started playing it and I'm like, oh crap. And I came up with a really intricate like thing to this particular tempo that was way yeah. slower and they start playing it and I'm like rushing along trying to like play this thing in the spot and then we get through it and I'm kind of like hey is is this the right version of something big and they're like uh yeah and I'm like hmm. I'm like I got sent a much slower version <laughs> that I've been learning and I didn't even think to like like the one I just went off the one Danny sent me I didn't even yeah. think to like YouTube the actual album <laughs> version or anything I was like this is the album version so that's okay so so, yeah, so that's that is yeah. insane. <laughs> but luckily it went well like the first time it was like pretty good and then they're kind of like okay can you do that again because I guess they want to really see what I was like doing yeah and then then I did it again and then it was like a lot kind of better I think okay <laughs> but uh yeah like yeah so so th that's kind of like my audition process learn everything practice really hard and learn everything um everything the artist has ever done so that if they're in the room you can talk educatedly about like anything they like or like all this stuff you know if you could be like oh i love i love ed sheeran <laughs> you know the way he does like this kind of stuff or like mm -hmm. but if sean didn't like ed sheeran and he'd never cover it you know yeah so yeah <laughs> so I always try to do that kind of stuff. No, of course. I think it's like better to do research about something that you're applying for instead of going into it blindly and just saying you want it, but then not showing that you want it bad enough. If yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, yeah. That's crazy. Because you and Zubin have been on a journey together for a while. Like, I don't know. How, how long have you guys known each other for? Because you guys work on a lot of projects before, right? It, yeah, it was really funny. Like I, uh, this just came up a couple days ago on Facebook. He, I guess I had written on his wall um, 11 years ago and he had never responded. <laughs> so I wrote on his wall like, hey man, like, how are you? Or something like that. And just two days ago, he just responded with, hey, I'm not too bad, how are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I had met him. I was, I used to play with, uh, with a guy called Jesse LaBelle. Okay. Um, and then there was this tour called the the Soda Pop Tour. It was the Much Music Soda Pop Tour. Oh. And it was, uh, do you remember Emily Osmond? I do, yes. So she was the headliner and then Jesse oh, was wow. second. And then uh, Danny Fernandez was on it. And like, wow. there was this big boy band called Wow at the time. <laughs> I don't remember Wow. I don't know they're if from, I do. They were from the States. But um, yeah, so, oh my God, where was I going? So I've been playing drums all day and I'm like kind of a little loopy. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So uh, before that tour, I did a couple a couple shows with with Jesse and then I met Zubin. He used to play with uh, a woman called uh, Susie McNeil. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so Jesse opened up for Susie McNeil on a couple of shows and then I had met, I had met Zubin backstage and that was like the very first time I met him and we were just getting ready to go on this big tour. And Zubin was like, oh yeah, so like what kind of venues are you doing? Are you doing like soft seaters or something like that? And he said that to me and I was like, uh, and I had no idea what soft seaters were, so, but yeah. I didn't want to tell him that. So I was like, uh, yeah, 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 soft seaters. <laughs> so if anybody asks you, that just means that you're just playing a theater. Why, okay. does, why don't you just say a theater? Why do you gotta say soft seaters? <laughs> oh, Zubin, that's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. so I've known for 11 years. We played in a bunch of different projects together. That's crazy. It's so nice to like have like a friend like on the road with you that you've literally gone through your whole music journey with too. Yeah. And that's so cool. Um, okay, yeah, I want to talk about like, I guess the Wonder era, which happened last, la yeah, last year <laughs> at the end yeah. of the year. It's what last year it now. Like? 
Uh, um, again, we, we don't know what time is. Time is kind of irrelevant at this point. Time is uh, just an invention. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're all in a simulation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, how was it like getting to like learn a whole batch of songs that you guys I guess were like working on for a while and then I guess it, the tour was obviously not going to happen so playing all these like live live shows yeah. <laughs> they were live but like <laughs> about the audience <laughs> yeah. uh, how was it like getting to learn that new batch of music yeah it was really interesting like this this direction that Sean has really went has been you know it's really interesting to to replicate live. Like Sean always comes out with very drum heavy music. So it really like, yeah, it really gives me like some work to do, you know? I really have to like come up with some interesting stuff, I guess. But with this album, um, there's like all the parts were pretty much like there, you know, like it, it sounded like a drummer. I know that sounds really silly, but like, uh, you know, a lot of the other, uh, like a lot of the, his older music, it doesn't necessarily sound like a drummer sitting down and playing it. It's like mm -hmm. a series of different sounds put together in mm -hmm. the form of a beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know if that really makes sense, but like, yeah. So with this, you know, like, like with Wonder, you can mm -hmm. hear a drummer go, bop, boom, 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 yeah. you know? And like, so when you listen to that song, I mean, I, as a drummer, I could hear a drummer playing that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so our challenge with this one was really like, coming up with the sounds and stuff and making sure it's it really has that like 60s vibe like sean kept on saying that his whole inspiration for this album was um uh can't take my eyes off you by frankie valley yeah so so that's all like you know all, all those like really vintagey kind of sounding drums but i don't play you know like i don't have a vintage drum set i have like a beautiful brand new DW drum set um but like you know a vintage sound wouldn't work for his older music and stuff like that so it's mm -hmm. kind of finding that like balance and you know it, it always comes back to find the balance of replicating the album well but making it sound more live and all this stuff what we would do a lot is um I would try to like the the main fills like the main kind of parts that really needed to be there I made sure they were there but then I would also add a lot of stuff to make it feel really live. So yeah, so we kind of ended up like, I would just be in rehearsal and we always start off with drums. Normally it's just like, just drums and the track kind of playing. And I just play along to it. And, um, and I come up with what I think it should be. <clears throat> and they'd be like, okay, cool. What else you got? Just like play for like 20 minutes or something like that. And then, so I just go and just play around all these like every idea I could possibly think of until my brain just explodes. <laughs> and, and, you know, they're kind of just in there. They're like, okay, okay. And then I, they, I like, I do something. They're like that, that do something more like that. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. What about this? <laughs> and so that's how we, we just came up with a lot of this, like a lot of the parts. Um, I was going to ask, how long does it usually take for you to come up with like an accompaniment for like his songs? Like, is there like a average time or is it kind of just like hitting and see where it lands yeah it's really it's really really uh yeah it's really a song by song kind of thing like there's mm -hmm. some songs like just specifically this new album like uh he's got a song the song called uh dream yeah uh like the drums on that it's very obvious what's happening it's like you know like i i always make notes and i, I don't know if I have here, but i always like i write all of the music out Mm -hmm. just to kind of kind of have like a map and I like I write out all the fills and like um I do what's called transcribing <laughs> uh and I write out the whole song so that when I get into a rehearsal I have a full blueprint of how the song goes mm -hmm. so if you know a lot of times like it'll be like okay we're going to extend this section or this section we want to cut it but like you go through like six or seven or ten songs in a rehearsal then you're like oh crap what, what, what was the one that we like extended and what was the one we like cut it down so it's like so I always find it easiest to just have it have it written out li li I literally do it with pencil and paper because <laughs> I'm old school like that nice. um, and I bring like an eraser and I have a pencil <laughs> and a pencil sharpener and I do the whole thing so with a song like dream I probably you know five minutes or something like that but then like you know then there's other songs like 
like stars or something like that. I know that song is only like three and a half minutes, but mm. it feels like a song that's like a 10 minute long song because there's so many different parts and so many that, different like, layers. Instrumental bit in the middle. Yeah. So cool. So, it's so cool. cool. Did. Yeah. Did you see the one where he rose up on a piano? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, what, what, what is going on? This is uh, like, if that was live and like, we could like <sighs> actually be in an arena to watch that. I think everyone just would just be like in awe. Like, I feel like it would be like an Elton John moment. I'm not going to like, I, yeah. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard rumors. I can't elaborate. <laughs> oh. Mike's going to spill the tea on this podcast. Couldn't possibly, couldn't possibly. <laughs> Oh, that's um, so exciting. that was really cool I saw them when they when they set that up they had like a full yeah. like harness and all this stuff and our production manager um he wrote it up he was the first person to ride it and like <laughs> I was sitting back just like watching him and like this thing went high like it went oh, yeah. literally like shot you can't really tell from the camera angles yeah but literally he was in this he was in the roof of like this building oh um, my god and then the production manager wrote it up and then wrote it down. And I was just like sitting there just filming. I'm like, whoa. And he's like, come try it. Come try it. And I'm too scared of heights. I could not do it. Oh, no. I was like, yeah. Did you get a chance to do that? Because that would be so cool. Uh, I did not think it was cool. <laughs> no, I thought it was cool. But I. <laughs> One foot off the ground. <laughs> yeah. Put me down. Put me down. <laughs> Oh, oh, it went man. really high. Like, I bet you they were 30 feet in the air. You know, like... Oh, my God. It was high. And he's just he's just sitting on, like, a piano stool. And literally in rehearsal, Sean got on there. Like, they strapped him in. And he went up like it was nothing. And I'm, like, looking at him. I'm like, how are you not freaking out right now? <laughs> casual, casual. He was so relaxed. Fine. He's like, so what? I just sit here? And then it just, like, went up. And he's, like, sitting there. He's like, okay, let's do it. He's like, let's do the actual thing. <laughs> like, I oh. would, I, like, however many harnesses they had, I would ask for double. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, that's crazy. That's He's just fearless crazy. with stuff like that. <laughs> He's absolutely fearless. It's crazy. Okay, so last time we talked back in 2019, um, you also filmed the Roland um, All Access thing that same day. Oh, which yeah. was so cool. How was it to kind of have, like, a drum feature like that on Roland? Honestly, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Roland are like, they're the biggest electronic company in the world. And I just randomly started, I, I randomly met the Canadian guy. Um, no, actually it wasn't random. I had messaged him like so many times. I'm like, man, I, you know, I love their stuff. They're awesome. Like, look, I have a Roland electronics drum set. Oh, nice. um, <laughs> are you sitting in your drum setup right now? <laughs> no, this is like, this is just my apartment setup. <laughs> ah, nice, nice, nice. We got a guitar and there's a ukulele sitting over there. Ah, oh, fun. <laughs> I've just recently started playing a ukulele. So much fun. <gasps> but yeah, that was really cool because yeah, I, I just love rolling products. And now now it's kind of like they're we're kind of like family over there. So and then we and then we went to um I went to NAM this year. I don't know if you know NAM. NAM is a is it's like a music drum, drum festival? Well it's like all like music. A... It's like it's in Anaheim, California nice um they this is the first year that they've ever canceled it <laughs> which is wild but it normally happens like january yeah. um and then yeah and then roland brought me out for a bunch of interviews there which was oh, really cool. cool yeah i did one with this drummer called brian fraser moore who uh lately he's justin timberlake's drummer but like he's played with whitney houston and like uh madonna and uh Aaliyah <laughs> I don't oh remember Aaliyah so he's like a very big deal kind of drummer yeah. and me and him were on this couch being interviewed by Eminem's uh percussion player so then and then we're like it was sort of a fun kind of interview and they had like I don't know I don't know if I'm supposed to say this but we had like kind of like some drinks kind of sitting yeah. there and we were sort of just like <laughs> drinking and inter like doing this interview and we'd like pull things out of a hat you had to answer these questions oh fun and it's like and these guys are a fair bit older. So they're having all these crazy conversations about like, oh yeah, when they were playing with Stevie Wonder and like when they're doing all this stuff. And I'm like, so then they're like saying all these crazy stories. And then it'd come to me and I'm like, oh yeah, like get this one. And then I'd like try to pull out the best story I had to try to like <laughs> impress these older musicians. And it, a couple of them worked. 
They thought it was you, very funny. You guys played for the Queen. You can throw that <laughs> yeah. one out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always forget about that. That's it's, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> That's so Sean, crazy. Like, yeah. That was a crazy day, too. We, like, we, we were standing side stage, um, getting ready to go on. And, like, the Queen was sort of just, like, walking around, kind of, like, stuff. Like, I guess she was walking to her seat. And then Tom Jones. Do you know Tom Jones? That's <laughs> You're the guy. Familiar. It's not unusual to get yeah, love yeah. anymore. Yes, 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 yes. But, I, like, you know, he's, like, a... He's definitely a legend of sorts. So, like, mm-hmm. then he's just standing there, and I'm, like, standing beside Tom Jones. And I'm, like, I'm like this is weird. And Sean's there, and then they start talking, and I'm kind of, like, wow, weird. <laughs> I'm just looking at Tom Jones right now. <laughs> I feel like you have, like, a lot of out-of-the-body experiences when yeah. you're just on the road. And you guys literally have traveled everywhere at this point. For yourself, I guess, like, for me, I am always, like, looking for new equipment pieces. For yourself with like drum equipment are you always like looking for like the latest like piece to like add to your kit or like are you ever satisfied with the drum kit that you have um <laughs> this is a this is the thing that we always kind of go back and forth to um because my i have a very large drum set like it's it's big um and there's a lot of pieces and stuff and like so we get into this thing where like i have three snare drums so like a snare drum is what's this one <laughs> <laughs> this one in the middle this I, have, one. <laughs> I have three of them set up on my drum set and mm. three backups of all of those so like wow. on the road I have I don't well by the end of that last tour I had three drum sets on tour I had an electronic drum set for just backstage I had an acoustic drum set just for backstage <laughs> and I also had like my main kit that was on stage but like so we always get into this thing where it's like um you know, it'll be like, I'm, I'm playing something and it's like, well, that snare just doesn't sound totally right. Maybe we should add another one. <laughs> and then so we'll like add another one and then add another one. And it's turned into just this like, you know, like I have chimes and hey, that's so cool. it sort of turned into my thing. <laughs> like <laughs> I took it from, I love this band called Dave Matthews Band. Mm-hmm. And the drummer is like all about the chimes. So when I started touring with Sean, I was like, you know what, I need to have chimes. <laughs> and I use them a fair bit. I think they're very nice. nice. But nice. I think I'm satisfied. If anything, I'm going to try to like downsize. Mm. <laughs> I need to get rid of some things. <laughs> we'll see what happens for this next tour. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. You also did like this, um, like you did um, kind of like a collab with all these other drummers across, was it the world or is it just Canada or? They're all Canadian. That's so cool. Um, how was that yeah. experience? Because everyone just loves music and to just yeah. like, collaborate with all of them. Yeah, it was cool. Well, the the um, Josh Taggart, who's the drummer for the Sam Roberts band, mm-hmm. he set that whole thing up. Um, and so I guess it was me, July Talk, the drummer from the Arkells was in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't remember who else was in that. But that yeah, that was it. That was really really cool. I did it. I filmed it right in my living room. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> we didn't we didn't have the dog yet you want to see the dog yes oh, oh yeah. my He's, god sorry my place is an absolute mess right now where'd he go <gasps> look at this guy <laughs> what's his name this is timon timon oh my god come on say hi, hi. Oh. <laughs> so precious <laughs> he was just at my studio listening to me drum all day so he's oh. very tired <laughs> Is this your guys? Are you uh, are you at your new place right now? Are you guys fully settled and everything? Or no? So this is this is our current apartment, but mm. um, we're not gonna move into the place I just bought just yet. Mm. We're gonna wait. I think we're gonna move in summer. I like you were like urgent. You were like, don't buy a house. Don't do it. Don't don't. And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> like, okay, I'll listen to Michael. Trust him. I think okay, investment wise, it's amazing. <laughs> But it yeah. will be the worst time of your life. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I haven't, like, I haven't, like, moved any, like, and I've always been with my family, so I haven't had to, like, do all that yet. So I'm, uh, yep, taking advice from, like, all my friends and just being, like, okay, try to stay in one place as long as you can. And, like, yeah. don't rush out to move too quickly and stuff. And I'm, like, okay, 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 breathe. <laughs> it, it was, cr- it was honestly crazy. I was reading this, I was reading this, um, this, like, article by this, um, uh psychologist or like something like that and he says that the most difficult things a person deals with is like like the death of a family member or losing a job and buying a house <laughs> so since the tour 
I've done all of those things. And it's been, I'm telling you, buying a house, I think is the worst thing. Oh no. <laughs> it's been the most stressful thing of all. Isn't it, isn't it the stressful trip of going to Ikea and buying all that new furniture? Isn't that like another thing that people are like, don't, don't do it. This is going to test your relationship. I, oh yeah, actually, we, I got, I've been in many of the fights in, <laughs> in Ikea. Oh no. <laughs> but that pales in comparison to dealing with mortgages. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh boy. You, you said you played drums every single day. Have you been playing drums every single day consistently since the whole COVID thing? Or are you just like trying to keep that stamina going? I did really well last year. <laughs> so last year, last year was really good. This year, the minute, um, or no, last year was 2020. Uh, <laughs> see, I don't even know. So last year we finished for the year. Like, I think I finished with Sean like mid November or something like that. And then the minute we got back or no, maybe it was October. Yes. Cause I was home for Halloween. Was I home for Halloween? Yeah, I was home for Halloween. Um, I was, <laughs> I was quarantining for Halloween. So I oh, like, no. I'm just sitting by myself with like a mask, <laughs> just like <laughs> eating chips. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as I got back, I, I was just like, okay, I'm going to buy, I want to buy like a loft. So like literally the last three months of my life have been dealing with, you know, like literally dealing with a mortgage. And then yeah. we closed on February 1st. So then I was like done. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> wow, like I can actually like do stuff. And I'm like, what did <laughs> I do before I was dealing with a mortgage every single day? No and, one, no one. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's been really interesting, like the entire time. So like in my apartment, I literally have this. This is like my drum set. You know, it's like very small. Uh, yeah. I can't, I still can't fully move out. So my parents' basement is where I have like my drums and all that stuff. Yeah. And I, I like it because I can like go over there and like, you know, my mom makes me like a sandwich and I like just go downstairs and I like play oh, and I have all my gear and it's like nice. Mm -hmm. But also because of the lockdown, I've been trying not to really go there when they're there, and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but so in the meantime, I've been playing so much guitar. Like I probably play, I probably play two hours of guitar every single day. Yeah. How uh, long have you been playing guitar for? Like technically, probably fifteen years. <laughs> but like you know, like I never, I literally, it, w it was collecting dust before COVID. Like oh, I, man. I didn't. I was just all about drums. My entire yeah. life has been all about yeah. drums. And then I started really, really focusing on guitar. I'm like, mm. oh, I really like guitar. So I've been playing a lot of guitar. And then my grandfather just gave me a ukulele. So I learned a couple of songs on ukulele. Um, but then after like all the dust had settled with this mortgage, I'm like, wow, okay. So now I can like start practicing here. I can like really like, you know, dive back into drums. So what was really weird and I've never had this experience before, but I, I guess as of like last Monday or something like that, I started really going and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna crack the books and I'm gonna like really, really like focus on practicing it. I want to like really get to that next level before we go back on tour. And then <clears throat> I like picked up the sticks and it's not that I haven't played in the last three months, like I have, but I've just been like playing, thinking like, oh man, did I buy a place I can't afford? <laughs> you know, like all this stuff, like this. And I was just like really stressing out. Um, and then so like last week I picked up the sticks and I'm like, this doesn't feel like, like when I pick up guitar, I feel like a beginner, but very comfortable. Like I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, here we go. <laughs> then I picked up drums and I'm like, okay, I'm a professional drummer and I don't feel too comfortable on these drums. Oh, no. I'm like, this is a really weird experience that I've never felt before. Yeah, so then I started like almost from the beginning and I like pulled out all these books and like went through and just started like deep studying. And then like, obviously, you know, it all comes back because I've been playing drums my entire life, mm -hmm. but yeah, so now I'm at a point where I'm like, I can play drums again. <laughs> and it just kind of started happening this week where I was like, oh, nice. shit. but I have a whole new appreciation for it. Because I didn't even realize they were the thing that I was missing in my life. <laughs> you know? just, just quote that, put that on a t shirt. That is, yeah. that is like the <laughs> most wholesome thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I started playing and I'm like, that's why I haven't been so happy. I'm like, I should have been oh. playing this entire time. They make me the happiest of anything in the world. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so like, wholesome. Oh, man. I'm pretty wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> For, like, our show, too, The Hangout, we always want to, like, see how music impacts people in different ways. How do you think music, or drumming specifically, has impacted you in, like, its own way? Um, oh, my God. Uh, literally in every way. <laughs> like, um, 
being a drummer has given me my like identity, you know, like mm. when people say like, you know, oh, he's that drummer. <laughs> like if I wasn't, it would be like, oh, he's just that guy that works at Starbucks, <laughs> you know, or like something like that, you know? Um, I've never really worked out that much. Like I have in the last couple of years, but like when I was growing up, I would just play the drums like all the time and like play really hard punk, like punk music and all this stuff. And like, so it's like my exercise, it's my creative outlet. It's my reason to smile. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's literally everything. It ticks off all the boxes for you. <laughs> it ticks it off literally... all the boxes. <laughs> and I like double realized that this week. Like, Aww, you know. <laughs> that's so awesome. It's, it's yeah. so refreshing because like, again, it's like the top of the year. So you'll be like fresh for the rest of the year knowing yeah. that like, the drums are literally your everything. Yeah. I always, I always feel like when the drums are going well, every other aspect of my life goes well. <laughs> you know, like it's kind of like if I have that one thing under control, then all these other mm -hmm. things seem like just small things. You know, like I can handle everything as long as I can play the drums. <laughs> That's so cool. To have that realization is so key because like I, some, I feel like sometimes people are just like aimlessly like looking for that one thing. But then yeah. once you find that one thing that makes you feel whole and everything, it's just. Hold on to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally everything else doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay. Well Music is everything. <laughs> it really is. And that's why, that's why I like did this podcast as a thing, because I feel like so many musicians have their own ways of like music impacting them. And just like hearing the stories is just so crazy because I don't know, people just think music's just like this thing that plays in the background or like yeah. it just is here, but it's like, no, like it's just so much more than that. And so much more. Yeah. Oh you, man. You, you got to chat with Zubin. He has some very, very interesting ideas. About Dude, I don't know how to get a hold of him. I want to, dude. <laughs> Yeah. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Your people will talk to my people. We'll set it okay, up. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I'll connect with you after this. <laughs> yeah, oh man, like, yeah. yeah. Just, like, all of you guys, I think it's just, like, seeing, when you guys are on stage as well, just, like, seeing you guys, like, do what you love is so, like, inspiring and just, like, you you can really feel that you guys love doing what you're doing because oh, you guys, yeah. It's, it really, it really comes from the heart. Like, you yeah. know, I like everything... <clears throat> That's what I, that's another thing I really like about Sean. It's not like he, if he's not feeling great or something like that, he doesn't put it on. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's like, that's his like actual emotion. Like everything he does, like at the Roger Center, they kind of cut it out in the Netflix thing, but like, he was so emotional that he, he was like crying, you know, yeah. on stage. And like at the, the Netflix thing, they made it seem like, you know, it was only a couple seconds, but it was a long time in, in the show, you know? That show was just... <laughs> Like, I still can't get over that show because I felt like even, I don't know, just, I guess because, I don't know, I've been, like, supporting you guys for, like, as long as I can remember now. But it's just, like, seeing all these different people from, like, everywhere around the world coming to that one venue and just seeing yeah. you guys do what you do is just so crazy for, like, us to just, like, like be emotional. So I can't even imagine how emotional it was for you guys to yeah. live that, too. So, I don't Yeah, know. it was wild. <laughs> wild experience. Hopefully we'll do it again. <laughs> please, 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 please. We will all be there. Like, Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So it has been an hour of music talk with Mike Sweet. Awesome. Good point. <laughs> great hour. <laughs> great hour. Great. Always great chatting with you. Always. Oh man. I can't wait. Like honestly, I just can't wait till everything goes back to normal, which I don't know when that will be, but um, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> It's thank you so soon. much thank you, thank so, you much so much for chatting it was so great catching up with you so um, nice chatting with you that's mike sleep on the hangout guys thanks for watching thanks thank for you for listening. thank you for hanging out oh he got it <laughs> <laughs> oh man thank you mike awesome. oh my god awesome thank you so much